In this demonstration, we look at the Hyper-V settings available on Hyper-V host. So all I'm going to do here is select my Hyper-V host, select my Hyper-V settings. First thing we've got here is our virtual hard disk location. As we can currently see, it's pointing at my local disk. Ideally, I'd want this on shared storage. Same with my virtual machine config files. Ideally, again, I'd like that on shared storage. Then what we have here is we've got our physical graphic processor unit, which is used with the remote desktop virtualization host role. It's currently not installed. I need to install it and that will give me enhanced graphics within the virtualized desktop. Numa spanning, if we have this tick box turned on here, it just allows the virtual machines to run across various Numa nodes. Now the downside of that is we might be accessing memory from a CPU that the virtual machine's not running on, but the advantage is this may allow us to run more virtual machines on the Hyper-V host. Live migrations is the ability to allow us to migrate a virtual machine from one Hyper-V host to the other in its running state. In the advanced features here, we've got the authentication controls. Then we've got storage migrations, which allows us to move the virtual machine files from one location to another. We've got the enhanced session mode policy. This just allows us to configure Hyper-V to allow these enhanced session mode connections to virtual machines. By doing this, this allows us to access local devices. Replication configuration allows me to replicate virtual machines from one Hyper-V host to the other. We've got the user settings, so we can specify what happens when we hit the Alt and Tab keys, specify when these keys are used. Mouse release key just allows me to release the mouse from inside the virtual machine connection. Enhanced session mode will allow me to use enhanced session mode as long as it's enabled on the Hyper-V host. And then we set the checkboxes, just means that if we have hidden any of the initial introduction screens, we can reset the tick boxes so that we can see those initial screens again. So we'll click OK at this point here. What we can also do is we can also manage all of this as well through PowerShell. So what we'll do here is we'll just launch PowerShell. So what we'll do here is we'll just issue a command to specify a different virtual hard disk path. So what we've typed in here is set hyphen VM host hyphen virtual hard disk path space backslash backslash lon host to backslash VHD. So we'll hit enter here. Now that we've done that, we'll just check again within our Hyper-V settings just to see if the command line has taken effect. So we'll minimize down PowerShell, come to our Hyper-V settings, and what we can see is we've now specified the shared location. So what we can see, we can manage it both through the GUI, but we can also manage it as well through PowerShell. And that's the end of this quick demonstration of having a look at the Hyper-V settings.